So I have restarted the game and uh, she simply recovered very very quickly and uh, so as you can see it's won quite a bit it's uh, much better Oh, that was a hit. Oh no. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. At least it's not over. Stop it. Okay. It's nearly over. Finish it. It's nearly over. They say Done! That was a good fight. Let's just fight them. Okay, whoa! There's more and more of them coming over consistently. Just uh, attack. Okay. You're close. No, just like that. Kick it. Even if they're wounded, they still attack. And um, eliminating them is uh, what I should be focused on. Too much quicker. That was probably the quickest kill of a uh, water with shield. All right, now we can move in forward. And we ended up with another puzzle. Okay. The journey to Helheim is never a straight one. Each must find their own path. Align yourself to its secrets, and you will find yours. Okay, let's listen to this message right here. However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to Hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild, who leapt into fire and rode to hell to join her slain love Sigurd, and is challenged by the giantess. Interestingly enough, she is a god. Obviously she's killing gods, she's killing demons, she is a god. It's just that we don't really know what kind of god is she. Because in theory she is a human. A human that uh, has uh, managed to successfully kill quite a few beasts now alright it says axes here interesting I can't seem to uh, Work it out. 
Let's move around. Let's see if any of this makes sense. Because so far, nothing really does. No, it does. Doesn't make sense. Where is that axe? I'm sure. I'm sure it has something to do with these. Uh, so, um, let's just try to work something out. Oh, yeah, finally, that's the next. Okay. Isn't that enough? Okay. No. That has to be it. Finally, <clears throat> but that was a close one. An uh, obvious <coughs> mind game here. Let's keep moving. Here we see another one. Okay, interesting. How can we come up with this? No, somehow somewhere there. Let's see. It's gone. It looks like the only way to actually have... Oh no, it wasn't it. They were all here. In any case, let's keep moving. It looks like it's all over the place here. Okay. Here it is. <clears throat> Done. These parts were in the middle of this. Oh wow, I see it. Okay, so now that that's done, we can safely come back and um, go through that gate. I wonder what will we meet there. Besides, who is going to be our enemy? So, I went through initial house. Initial castle, smaller one, and now we're gonna move into the bigger one. It's opening. Who is it? It's coming. That song again. Is it? Is it? Is it? Tell her. Yes, the source of the darkness. It's coming. This is your moment. I'm sorry. I can't watch this. What are you doing? You're showing weakness. You're not a warrior. You're a disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Okay. Get up. Get up. 
Get up and fight! <laughs> Looks like the Dark is a much, much more capable fighter than I am. Hell is reaching deep inside of her. Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts and fears. As seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people fear seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's cursed. Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there is no one left to do that for you. Everywhere you What's that? Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Do it. Come on. There. <laughs> Why go on when you give everything and face that which torments you, only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined? Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory, a feeling, a song. Let's go then. <clears throat> I see in the light, and it pretty much means that uh, I may be close to death, or that uh, some kind of a god is um, making something happen. Let's just move forward. I see broken ships, and here's the god. Here's the light. Oh wow! Okay, let's uh, move forward. Oh, 
right. Yeah, I'm wounded unfortunately and um Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning. She rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs. Errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren. And lonely. In any case, let's follow that light. Nothing lives here, not even you. It's in your mind. You think you can see it, but it's in your mind. Okay. There he was. The lone figure of a boy. He's there. Under the tree. So we play under the shade of a tree. She remembers the first time she saw him. I'm not. Oh, here I. Here's the passage. He moved as if dancing, and the world danced with him. The gloom lifted. For the first time in years, she felt a ray of hope. I wonder if I have to swim there. Would that be a viable uh, option? It seems that there's still some uh, some space to move forward. In any case, there's a mine here, and um, could it be that we have to go there? Also, I've seen a ladder over there. Oh, look at that. The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try. But the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it. But Sigmund refuses him. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast. But when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. She doesn't have a sword, unfortunately, so she can't really defend nearly as effectively without a sharp metal. Well, she can use that stick that she carries with her. Well, obviously it's not the stick, but um, it still has a metal end to it, so you can hit day it. Day after day, watching from afar, she mimicked him, perfecting her own secret dance. Wishing those fleeting moments of light would stretch out to last forever. Alright, we're in the really, really large ship here. No, it's a trick. It's an Where are you going? Where is she going? What is she following? You can't even fight. It's just deception. How does he so effortlessly court the world in bliss? If only she could do the same. See the world through eyes anew. And dance with it. Just like he does. So we are in a village, and looks like this is certainly 
a place um, anybody could survive in with good houses unfortunately it may not be a village because there's only two houses so maybe it's a family or two living here What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait! Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well... I... I watched you. And... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. Feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Norsemen took him from her. So one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide in their terror. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! Let's go and listen to another rune here. It looks like it wasn't the rocks, it was just these signs that... Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. ...have information. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister. And she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. All right, <laughs> then we'll just have to read about it to know what happens, I guess. Or buy more of his runes to listen to more of his stories. In any case, I see that there was an interesting rock there. I wonder if that rock uh, carries any kind of uh, valuable information. 
let's uh, move closer to it and take a look. No, if there was anything, it got taken out. However, it is well uh, made. Splendid indeed. Okay. I'm finally by the entry and uh, we are going to be moving in. Oh, look at that. That's a sword. It looks like take I can take sword. this. Sword. Take it. Tell you for you. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Shard. A king in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn. And it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. Well, we'll just have to explore this further. It's so strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary, inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death, because we have no answer for it. But when it comes, and it forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. 